There used to be a border check between New South Wales and Victoria to stop the spread of fruit flies. Not anymore, and especially not when it comes to the flying fruit flies. They're a circus of school kids, both primary and secondary, and they hail from Albury Wodonga, a troop that's welcome anywhere in Australia, indeed, just about anywhere in the world. I think it's been the most important thing that's ever happened to me. It's, um, I don't know, it's, it's changed my life. I always love to be in front of an audience. I love to, I suppose I love to show off. <laughs> but Were you one of those little kids who did songs and put on shows for your parents? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Kids from country towns, getting their chance to do what most of us can only dream of. So you do have a carrying figure there. You had ten of these in each one? Yeah. So now what's your answer then? Ordinary school kids during the day Radio, so right again. at their own special fruit fly high. Wash the dishes, dry the dishes. Extraordinary performers after hours. Certainly in terms of their origins and that kind of thing, they're absolutely ordinary Australian kids. Charles Parkinson is manager of the Flying Fruit Fly Circus, a 60-member troupe homegrown in Albury, Wodonga. Despite the fact that they're ordinary kids, our kids know that, they are, that there's something that they can do, there's something special that they can do that almost no one else in Australia can do. The fruit flies perform both alone and in swarms. The theory behind this particular circus is that any child can do something. And some, like young Shane, he's the one on top of the bike, can do just about anything. What are you best at, Shane? Um, pyramids and group bike. Have you ever fallen off? Yeah, but I got taught by the person in shoulders that I was on. Are you ready? At eight, Shane is the youngest fruit fly. <laughs> in fact, this is his first season. Sit back a little bit. Go. <laughs> the oldest trooper, Matthew, has just turned 18. For a fruit fly, that's retirement age. How do you feel about going? Um, it's very emotional. Um, it's going to be sad leaving the troop. They're world renowned and I'm glad that I've been a part of it. It takes confidence and a lot of talent. Okay. Yeah. Handstands on teetering oh. chairs that revolve for good measure faster. is not child's play. Faster. The secret of circus is to make it look dangerous without it really being dangerous, which is what we strive to do. Some of the routines take years to perfect. Like 16-year-old Donna's star turn, the cloud swing. Six metres up and just skill and one thin safety rope to keep her there. Donna, good job. Donna's coach, Tanya, oh, is a former fruit fly. At 22, with literally a child at foot, she's come back to pass on the skills and the joy of the circus. I remember when I was really little, I used to dream about being in the circus, and then I just got this opportunity, and I just went, oh, wow, I can't believe this, it's real. It was amazing. Is there a secret of the circus? Hard work and dedication. Do you, as a teacher, just stand there sometimes and look at them and feel immensely proud? Oh, yeah. I can remember once I was teaching a perch act, which is an aerial act, 
and we trained really, really hard for ages and we got up there in performance and I was nearly crying afterwards because it was so beautiful. I'm not quite sure which foot to put in, so put this one in. And yeah. this is the perch, oh, performed by Tanya and her sister, Brooke. Pull it and work the right way. After 11 years in the spotlight, Brooke's now known as the old woman of the circus. Yeah, at 16 I'm sort of the old one, you know, last from my generation from it. And they always, you know, look at me as, oh, old, you know, she's an old fruit fly. They're normal kids who've had a great opportunity and they've grabbed it. David Lester is Tanya and Brooke's father. He went along to the very first fruit fly performance in 1979 and could scarcely believe what he saw. I think a lot of parents didn't realise the kids had their own kids had it in them. I think that was part of it. It was right out of the blue and it was magic. Some of the mums and dads were in tears. Why cry at a circus? I think you're crying at the kids. There's so much enthusiasm going into it. Uh, you, I think people are, are genuinely pleased to see kids doing well and enjoying it. Place the ball. Ready? Yeah, foot on and go. You started in the circus when you were five. Yeah. Did you love it right from the beginning? It was excellent. I loved touring. It was really, really good. And like having people around you all the time, it was like, it was really lively and there was never a dull moment. One, two, three, five. Yes, good. It's all timing and practice. Most of all, it's fun. And these fruit flies know that no matter how hard it is for them to learn a stunt, there's always someone worse at it. See you girls. Do you get any complete and utter duds? 20% of them are uh, duds at the start, but there isn't a circus skill that someone can't learn. So and Don't they feel scared sometimes? They're terrified sometimes. I've seen kids being asked to do something and they'll be in tears. They'll still do it. And the look on the face after they've achieved the thing that they were in tears beforehand for is a reward enough for us and for them. But it's exactly the same as if I asked you to jump off a trapeze into a backflip. You, you have you'd, you'd be in tears too. <laughs> and so would I. Imagine the person who had to catch us. <laughs> Ready, uh, Over the years, the fruit flies have travelled the world. Italy, China, America. But each new generation has to learn all the old tricks. For some of these fruit flies, it'll be their first tour. And they've got just two weeks to get the show on the road. One, one later, Amanda. One later. One, two, pass. <laughs> Some routines still need a lot of polish. Do you ever worry about pushing them too hard? I mean, they are only children, after all. No, I don't. It's much more of a danger they push themselves too hard than we'll push them too hard. Um, we've had plenty of strains and sprains and bruises. I mean, if you're doing slapstick comedy, you're going to end up with bruises because you spend your whole time falling over. Um, but nobody comes off a football field after a hard game of football without bruises either. Bruised but unbowed, they hit the back roads of country Victoria. 10 towns in 12 days. Go! Sometimes, though, it takes a little bit extra just to keep the show rolling. Gives them a lot more responsibility in life, so they grow up a little bit quicker. But then they, that balances out. They still muck around and big kids heaps because there's so many of them. And they get up to a lot of things, heaps of things. <laughs> when they're on tour, do they become an enormous handful at times? I mean, yes. 18 yes, kids. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> An alfresco breakfast. Two dozen mouths to feed at a country motel. All right, so put the SE. And later, alfresco lessons. Because at the end of the tour, 
they still have exams to yeah, pass. Yeah, you're, you're going really well here. You've just got the next step to go. Another day, another town. And this is one of the very bad days. Put your nice. name on your cup. Nice. Half the troop are down with the virus. Without going into the gruesome details, they haven't slept all night. But the show must go on. Have some of this, give you energy, OK? So you'll be raring to go in an hour, if you get enough biscuits. When you have disasters, so if you get this, do you ever think, look, I just don't want to put them through this, I'll, let's cancel? My philosophy about these things is usually to discuss it with the kids. I mean, they're... Ex Despite the fact that they're children, they're also very experienced performers and they know what they can do and what they can't do. And if a kid says, I can do it, I feel terrible, but I can do it, then I know that they can do it. Okay, it's your ten minute call, ten minutes to showtime. And can everyone hear me? Remember that as soon as you're out there, you're in front, you're in front of an audience. Are you ready? Yes! It's what being in this circus is all about. Not money, because fruit flies don't get paid. Not even doing every trick perfectly. Just getting in there and having a go. Part of what we're trying to do is to guide them through the maze of adolescence, if you like. Um, and if in some way we can make that passage to adulthood more enjoyable and smoother, then that's a fantastic thing to do. The motto of the Fruit Flies is ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Are they really ordinary kids? Someone once told me it should be the other way around, extraordinary kids doing ordinary things, which is sort of more suitable in a way, because I don't think they're ordinary kids. I think each one of them are really special. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9Now app.